It's Big Southwest and I'm giving you the okay. Told you he was giving you the okay. Okay, back today to make a way. He's gonna uh, die today. All right, so we got uh. Big Southwest back back again for the second time. Yes, sir. Big Southwest and I'm checking in. What's going on, bro? Man, you know me, slow motion, you feel me? Is it really? Yeah, slow motion, man. You know what I'm saying? Slow motion better than no motion. As long as it's happening, I'm happy. That's happening. what you said. That's, that's the exact way you started the last one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's told you that I, I don't change much, huh? Yeah, for sure. I don't, I don't believe that, though. You've been been doing a lot of shit you got a lot going on especially right now today i know so how, how's everything going man you know we in grind mode right now shoot we got the big show uh we what four days away from the big show right now mm -hmm. so we phone been jumping you feel me i've been at this place passing out flies hanging up posters this place tagging cars so we just been grinding you feel me i've been grinding for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of want to like catch up since the last one we did. That was in 2020. That was before playoff mentality dropped. Yeah. So um, I think you were working on that at the time. We kind of talked a little bit about that. It might have been coming, but um, yeah, I just came back from uh, I just came back from California. I mm -hmm. just came back from recording. I think that's what it was. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, you got that all wrapped up and got out. out and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, what you think about it? I mean, that was on my Apple Music. I, I think I tweeted the screenshot. I don't know if I did or not. It was on my top five or ten, some Apple Music that year. Okay. Yeah, man. Uh, shit. That was a, a great. Whew. That's a nat near and shit. Yeah, that motherfucker almost got me. <laughs> nah, that was a great body of work, bro. That man, I I appreciate it, bro. Uh, I think that's my best body of work as far as like I an agree. album. That's I feel like that's my first album. I feel like the time that we put into it was real, like, phenomenal. It was real spiritual. It was real touching. You just had to be there. It was one of those type of situations where I had all my producers come and they cooked up. You feel me? I had some homies pull up, cook up, you know? So it was just like one of those experiences that was just like so beautiful. You feel me? I feel like that it came out the way it came out because of like where we was at, the aesthetics, the setting. All of that, it was just all around just beautiful. You feel me? That's why I feel like that body of work was beautiful. For sure. For me. Yeah, no, no doubt. So sure. beyond that, like, um, how do you feel like the reception was? Cause uh, they love it. Uh, I still get people that want to hear that, you know? I mean, I know we got, we'll get to that, to the new stuff, but uh, like, I got people that like tell, call me every day and say, man, this song was the one for me. Like, you should have did more with this song. Yeah. Uh, you should have did more with that song. You know, so it was just like one of those situations I like, said, you know, but I'm still pushing it though. So I ain't really stop. I ain't let up on the gas. I have a little bit doing so much other stuff, but you feel me? Like that shit's still in heavy rotation for sure. For sure. It's still, no way still on the radio, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Talk you about, talk about that, like as far as, you feel like, you feel like that's your biggest song? No way. Yeah. Um, just as far as like the, like the everyday type of, you know, it's on the radio and. I feel like, I feel like that's that. my most like industry ready song probably. Yeah. But I, I can't really just say, but uh, because anything can go with the industry these days. But um, I would say probably industry ready, like industry ear. Uh, I would say that's probably one of my mate, my most, uh, it's my most Shazam song for sure. For sure, it got like. 14, 1500 Shazams. Damn. Radio yeah. will do that, huh? No, nah, for sure. The radio <laughs> did that. The radio turned me up. It piped me up, for sure. For sure. For um, sure. So, what do you feel like? I mean, you kind of. What makes you not think it should be? I mean, I feel like that's that's the the one to me. But I told you that as soon as I heard it, like right, that was we, we that was like, the one. Yeah, the listening party and shit. I Man, mean, uh, I feel like no way probably could have been. The, it still is the yeah. one that I mean, we still push it. But yeah, no, no doubt. But you just said it like you didn't know. Like you weren't like yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. I yeah. feel like other stuff was probably gonna be harder. But it also, it's about the consumer. Like I could push a record and they not be receptive to it. So, you know, they were really well, they was really receptive to No Way. So that's the one we just kept mashing the gas with. So that's what we've been on. For sure. And then you were also involved in a, another like major project. Um, Fire in Africa. Fire in Africa. Since yeah. Then. So kind of talk about that Damn. from your experience. Cause I don't, I forgot it. I don't know if, 
it was when we did the interview if it was before y'all went to the mansion or if it was like right after to where I, I think we already went to the mansion oh uh, yeah we went to the mansion earlier that year because mm -hmm. it came out in 21 yeah yeah we went to the mansion earlier that year but uh just overall i mean that experience was just amazing uh just to be around so many dope rappers like i'm talking about motherfuckers that can rap circles around me for sure and uh just to see them in their element and then they see see me in mine so they be intrigued by what i do and i'm be like man y'all the motherfuckers that's that's really cold with it like you feel me i feel like i just be putting shit together that shit they really be like lyrical so you know what i'm saying that, that was amazing just to feed off those those great uh artists at uh shit to feed off of those great artists you know what i'm saying and they they energy and catch them and they vibe and they element it was beautiful for sure i feel like you kind of like even on the on dr view's other project like mm -hmm. you, you can get in that bag a little bit yeah man uh shit, i think i can too man but see, i feel like thomas thomas who really pulled that out of me I wrote that verse on the way going down to the studio. I just, uh, I don't know, I was just in my bag. Like he he be, he be making me think with the words and, and with the wordplay, so you feel me? Like, I feel like he a big uh, boost to what I got going on. Like, he be like, man, you gotta use your degree, bro. <laughs> That's what he tell me, like, use your degree, bro. You nice with the words, just use them. You know what I'm saying? So. Cause I don't be thinking about how to put certain stuff together and he'd be like, nah, you gotta lick, you know what I'm saying? So I just be seeing shit a little bit clear with, with the words and putting it together with the cadences and shit like that. So yeah, for he, sure. help, he help he help a nigga a lot for sure. No doubt, shout out to Thomas. He can... Nah, for sure, he he cold bro, I ain't gonna rap lie. Ass off for sure. Bro can rap his motherfucking ass off for sure. Like he just be having a nigga thinking about the shit like, yeah, I could do that way better, okay, bet. For sure, he motivation will be around. For sure. So as far as like um, the reception of Fila, and I know you've done like shows and stuff mm -hmm. um, since then, like j just how do you feel like the whole situation went as far as like, um, you know, getting picked up from by Motown and uh, everything like that? Man, uh, a lot of that I didn't kind of deal with either because the cut that I did, the, uh, the cuts that I did, it didn't, it got cut, it didn't make the album. You know what I'm saying, but I still was involved with a lot of the stuff that went on with it. But uh, so I'm just talking, I guess, really about like the bigger movement, like as far as like what it did for for the state and like. Oh you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, shit. The way they're continuing it even after like the initial push is kind of. Uh, shit. For me, you feel me? It was already just about you know to push my my own individual grind at the same time. Like, I mean, we pushing this album. You know, and people got looks and stuff like that. So that was a big plus for the Oklahoma industry and some motivation to to, to let the world know that it's talent here. You know what I'm saying for sure. How'd you feel that you didn't make it? Uh, really, to me, I feel like uh, I wasn't like fucked up about it. Like some of the, some of the artists was fucked up about it. Yeah, I, I would. <laughs> I heard some stories. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the artists was fucked up about it. I was just more happy to be involved with the whole process because I didn't think that uh, I personally fit what was going on. But then when I got around what was going on, I see that I did fit. And also too, I feel like that whole album, it kind of like tells a story. And some of, the, some of what I was kicking it wasn't along the lines of some of the stories that's kind of told, you know what I'm saying? And that's just how I think of it. I don't think it was because of like, oh, my verse wasn't hard enough. It probably just didn't fit. Just like conceptually. Like yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. For sure. It, didn't, it may have just didn't fit, yeah, conceptually. For, for sure. sure. But I mean, you still, you know. You, but you, the process yeah. to, to be around like Chris McCain's, Grand Nationals, and First Verses, and uh, Tone and King Cud and Keezy and Steph and Doctor View like, to be around those people. And there's so many more you can name the Ko's, the Bambies. Man, it's just it was just beautiful. Like bro, like beautiful. But then we spent again and did the other one at the mountain at the mansion. 
Mm. And that shit was crazy. My verses was dumb on there. I know my shit making that motherfucker. I know it. You hear me? I know that shit gonna be on that motherfucker. That hoe was too crazy. For sure. For sure. That was at that that one studio we went to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, after uh, did you come up to the studio after we uh, did? Uh, I didn't go to view shit, but after. Legacy last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After we performed, we had a session up there. Mm -hmm. You came. I, yeah. I knew I seen you up there. Yeah. yeah. The vibes up there was amazing too, though. For sure. That was in twenty one. For sure. Um, you know anything about that project as far as? Uh, no, nah, no. Nah, I don't know nothing about that project just yet. Uh, we just waiting to see who pick it up. So how does that go with like you? Y'all just he just you just show up and act and. Nah, he's see when it comes out, type shit or what? It's our business and with view for yeah. sure. It's our email, like schedule, like you feel me? Like we got windows, we got to reply back by a certain time type deal. Like it's our business, but that shit like that, that's what I be interested in. Like okay, I need to run my shit a little bit like that. You feel me? I just be taking bits and pieces. Like he a mastermind though, for sure. I fuck with how he be doing what he what he be doing. For sure. Um, so I want to touch on something that's a little heavy, you know what I mean? As far as like your dad passed away mm -hmm. right around that time. Yeah, um, uh, in 21. Mm -hmm. it, it was like right around the time Playoff Mentality dropped, right? Uh, it was in, like, in January. Yeah. He passed in January. It was around the biggest. Yeah, it was around when Barbie dropped. Uh, and I dropped uh, Playoff Mentality in March. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he died on the 26th of uh, January. Exactly. So um, did that kind of like mean more to you putting that out or it, was there any thought uh, as far as like you know kind of a tribute type of thing or was it just kind of two separate no nah, i mean i really was i really probably wouldn't even put the music out you know but i feel like i was kind of like in a sunken place too i feel like doing the music at that time it helped me get out of where i was at mentally you know what i'm saying i was defeated just like you know you don't you only get two parents, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that shit's just kind of like wow. Like now nah, my dad's like not here. Just like damn, that's crazy. I can't pick up the phone and call him. So it just had me in a in a real ugly place. But the music was already recorded though. You know what I'm saying? But that shit just kind of put me in a ugh type of mode. But like dropping, it helped me get out of that. And then all the things that we was doing and traveling. And, with all the music going on the road. Oh yeah, you did go to the mountain and, I'm sorry, that had to bounce around, but <laughs> you came with us to KC too, yeah. yeah. Fucking right, I forgot. Damn, but yeah, just going through all of that stuff, man, that shit just, like just even thinking about that made me smile, like yeah, bro, all of that shit just helped me kind of get back into the groove of really doing the music and stuff like that, because I know that, that's what he would have wanted, like, you know, like, not for me to sit on my ass and mope and cry like shit. All right, we gotta go take care of the family now. Yeah. So, shit, that's what we do every day. For sure. <laughs> um, so talk about kind of um, traveling and, you know, going to shows out of state and, you know, just, just getting on the road and doing, like, I feel like y'all do like real rapper shit sometimes. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like not even to like gas it up, but like yeah. it's, it, it's not too many people like really doing rapper shit. You know what uh, I mean? So, so just talk about kind of like, I, I guess what that feels like. Shit, it get tiring at times, but it's amazing to get on the road to go eat. That's what we, I be excited <laughs> yeah. about going to go eat. But I mean, shit, like, it's all a grind, bro. Like, we just try to tap in with all you the DJs. way more excited about Nola's than anything we did in Tulsa. I'm glad you were. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for sure. I'm trying to eat. For sure, I'm trying to eat something. But um, for the most part, really, bro, shit, just networking. Like, I got a fat mouth. Like, I can talk to people. Like, I'm trying to figure something out. I'm trying to figure out who you are. You know, so to be in those elements where I can just be free, don't have to worry about like watching my back or nothing like that. Not that I'm in any type of thing, but you know, just, you yeah. feel me? I'm, I'm here, yeah, to, all of these people that's here is here to network and be artists or be A&Rs, be managers, whatever it is. Like, we just try to be on the road and try to be at the places where we need to be seen and we start to see the same people. So eventually you have no choice but to talk to these people like, bro, I just seen you over in Atlanta and, and in Denver and in Dallas. Like, man, what you do? What's your name? Okay, and then you just build from there. You For feel sure. me? 
Um, so talk about kind of like collective wise. I don't I don't know if the the when when like what's up with the gap game? Just what is it? <laughs> what about it? Everything. I mean, I, it's hard for me to ask questions that I know the answer to. So kind of just <laughs> just let people know what gap game is. First uh, of it's all. a conglomerate. It's it's several different artists. You feel me? It's a lot of us, bro. We're a family. You know what I mean? Shit. You know, that's really what it is. You feel me? It's like really like a family. Like we the guys. You feel me? We do music. Shit. We entrepreneurs. Shit. We actors. We do all this shit. For sure. For sure. You know, whatever so, the motherfucker need, we we gonna supply. For sure. For sure. So how did that come together? Relationships. The studio. KLS One. That's really where it all started. You know, uh, with with Barb's and Scheme and. GTK, SDK, all the guys, Atticus, all of them, TT, shit, O'Shea, all of them. Like, this all started from the studio. Dreads, well, Dreads didn't start at the studio. He's been around since been around. That's really like my little brother, for real. But yeah, but everybody that's been around has been around. Like, from the beginning. Like, if they in one video, they gonna be in the rest of them. From that from first video on, you know what I mean, or whatever, so it was just, that's just what it's been. Like, we really like a conglomerate, bro. Like, we just can't be fucked with. You feel me? Can't be stopped. Untamable. You feel me? Off the chain. You feel me? Colossal. All that shit in one. You feel me? The heavyweight, the biggest package you can get. The platinum. You feel me? The diamond. All that shit. For sure. <laughs> I was gonna let you go as long as you wanted to go. I was gonna keep going. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so but like, what's the what's the motivation? I guess I mean, obviously that's that's your people that you're always around and stuff. But what's no, the motivation to like, like officially like click up and push this one th this one agenda? You know what I mean? Or like, how does how does that officially happen? I guess. I mean, we all like-minded individuals about something. We all have a passion into this music industry, whether it's. Yeah. Being in, in front of the mic or behind the scenes, you know, so we all have the, those like like minds of also all being rich, being wealthy, you feel me? Being able to take care of our families and making sure that, you know, we can survive the next day and we ain't got to live day to day. So once you get all of that and everybody has the same like minds with almost with, with relationships, principles and values and things like that, and mindsets, then you can have an agenda. You can come up with an agenda. You can push a goal. We can be one entity now because we all are on the same page. And I feel like it was real genuine for us to all be on the same page. You feel me? And I think that's the best way to put it, uh, honestly. I guess that was my question. Like it was organic. It wasn't yeah. like somebody decided to start Gap Game one day and no, nah, recruited members and shit. No, no, no. It was just like shit. It was just like yeah. It just kind of formed. Like we, it been a thing, you know. But now we really got the right pieces and players to put into the spot, so that way we could pop, you know. Okay. What do you feel like those pieces are? Uh, what you mean? Like what do you you say you got the right pieces? Like what do you feel like those pieces are? Uh, those pieces are just team players. You feel me? I feel like everybody wear different masks, jerseys, and hats with us. It's not just one person that do one thing. Like we all do something. We all do a few things. So we just, you know, wherever that we like Tetris. Like each one of us is a, a special piece that can do everything, literally. So when we go on the road, we don't ever need a DJ, cameraman, uh, beat maker, engineer, uh, manager. Uh, whatever we don't need none of it because we, we come in with all of it whether it may be six people that go five people that go we come in with everything that we need all the time so you know I feel like it like I said it's just like organic is natural you feel me like it's just real fluent it's like water with a wave you feel me I just I don't know how to really even explain it it's just like shh. for sure so like from the outside looking in it kind of seems like um Obviously, there's a few people that took like a prominent role, but it seems like you kind of, um, I don't want to say like, you know, call the plays necessarily, but you, you like, um, you push the shit Phil forward. Phil Jackson. Over there. Yeah. yeah. I feel like Phil Jackson. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't uh, going to say that, but you more yeah, than I, I No, nah, man, to be honest, I feel like, shit, whoever, whoever got something going on at the time is Phil. That's who called the plays. You feel me? I just so happen to be running a lot of plays 
You feel me? But not only just me, like you see, you've been on the road with us. You see whoever's the head honcho at the time, that's the one who call the shots. It's not just, just me, you feel me? I be involved with a lot of stuff, but everybody else is involved with a lot of stuff too. So whatever we decide that we're doing at that time, whoever like put it together or whatever, just run the reins. They hold the reins to the horse, you feel me? For sure. So let's get into the new project a little bit. Come on. Uh, you dropped Give Me Up, what, about a month ago? Yep, yeah, uh, May 16th. Okay. May 16th, I dropped Give Me Up. What month yeah. is it, shit? Th three August, months ago damn, almost. damn, almost three months ago, damn, okay. yeah. Um, Streams going up still. For sure. So so just talk about that project a little bit. Uh, Give Me Up was just a project in between probably my next album or my next body of work that's I'm hoping and praying to surpass, you know, playoff mentality. But Give Me Up, I felt like I was in that mode where I was kind of slipping back in uh, through depression. Well, not, let me not even say depression. I was just fucked up. Like, you feel me? Uh, shit, shit just wasn't going right, so I guess, yeah, you depression. You depression, though. Yeah, you, that's you know what we saying? say, I'm fucked up, but yeah. that's, that's depression. Yeah, no, life. for sure. <laughs> you feel me? I ain't, no, I ain't no doctor. I can't diagnose yeah. myself with that. But um, I just felt like, you know, things weren't going right with, with me personally, with business, with life. I was just thinking about, like, my pops a lot. I was falling in that mode where I didn't want to do the the music, you feel me? But the peers around me was grinding hard as hell. So they was steady getting me up, like, feel me? Sometimes I'd come to the studio to get a charge, you feel me? But it was a time where I wasn't coming to the studio at all. But I had to come to the studio to give me a charge, give my heart a boost, get a jump, you feel me? So uh, give me up is just one of those things, like, you feel me? If you gotta play, I gotta play, you gotta play, whatever, you feel me? I'm gonna put you on a play or whatever it is, get you into it, get you up, get you off your dick, get you off your back pockets, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like it just fit at the time. Like it's just really like some go get money music. You feel me? Like if you like getting money and you like fresh clothes, you like bad hoes, you feel me? This is what you put on. You start your day off every day with how you feel. Every day, I got niggas that start their day off every day with how you feel, you feel me? Like that's just it's just some feel good music. For sure, no, it For definitely sure. is. That's what I feel good music. You feel good. Said, we did that uh that little top five thing and I said it does what the title says. Like Yeah, yeah it gets sure. you up. Yes sir. Um, yes, sir. So that was that was almost like a it was almost for you as much as it was for like the fans kinda. Yeah, I feel like when I make music, I'm probably going through whatever I'm talking about at the time or I'm just talking to my peers who listen to me. I ain't, I'm looking to always gain new ears, but I'm not looking to 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 talk to the people who don't want to hear what I've got to say. I'm just interested in, in, in reaching the people that want to listen to a nigga spit his ism, whatever that shit is, you feel me? Whatever, like, I know my ism is, is fashion, clothes, money, and hoes. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what I spit. I, don't, I ain't no killer. Don't push me. <laughs> Don't push me, but I ain't no killer, you feel me? For sure. I'd be chilling. For sure. So how do, how do you feel like um how do you feel like that project went as far as like I know you kinda said it was just like a between type of thing, but do you, you feel like it did what it was supposed to do? Like Hell yeah, like over? But it got me a lot of new fans, like, cause a lot of people like that shit. Like, how you feel today? I'm feeling good in the bitch. Like sometimes you even if you fucked up, you feel me, you gotta just listen to that shit cause it just make you feel good. Like GQ put a bounce in that motherfucker, like it's a lot of uh uh huh, oh yeah, baby, yeah, it's finna go up tonight, you feel me? You get you on a little jigger or something, you feel me? I don't do that but shit. Some people like that's what they like and they get the yeah, you know? That's what I like. I'm seeing motherfuckers just bounce like, oh yeah, he coming with that, he spitting. Feel me? That's what I like. For sure, um, you t GQ produced the whole thing too. Right? Mm -hmm. so, GQ pr produced was, the whole tape from beginning to end. Was that a like a conscious thing, or that was just the way it shook out? Oh uh, shit! I feel like me and him was just making songs, and then like, psh, but the shit was all last year. Probably two or three songs was this year, mm -hmm. and then we just put that shit out, and then boom, it just went up. And then he went up to a whole nother level, dropping the shit with Peso. Like, feel me? He got some more shit coming. Like. We got so much shit, like, boy, I'm talking about real shit. I bullshit you now, I can't lie. Uh, and, and, and hopefully we can play this back and we can laugh and all this other shit, bro. But we got shit 
that labels probably can't even fuck with on they whole compilations or whatever. Like, we got so much heat, bro. If they just took the time to sit down and listen to us, they gonna fall in love with everything that we got to offer because we got shit, we got that shit, dog shit, big shit, you smell us. Every time we step into a building, you gonna smell us. You feel me? We big shit and we pop it for sure. You gonna smell us for sure, Jack. I swear to God, this shit that crazy, bro. Y'all gotta tap in. You feel me? We ain't got, hey, you better get on the wagon wise room. For sure. So for let, sure. Let, you wanna let them know what you're talking about at all? What? That's everything that we do. Everything okay. from the clothes so to the to the fashion like, like to coming. the music, man. We got some shit like individually artists got some tapes coming, mixtapes, EPs. Uh, we got a compilation tape that's coming. You feel me? Uh, shit, we just got some stupid shit going on. I'm talking about dog shit, bro. Like you niggas need to definitely catch up, bro, cause y'all not cutting it mustard, for sure. I'm telling you, for sure. <laughs> For sure, I'm popping shit, baby. They, these niggas is late. <laughs> We've been. I'm telling you, when they get the shit, it's gonna be, man. I'm telling you, bro. They're they gonna be distributing that shit around the world. I'm telling you, bro. We got some hot shit, bro. For sure. For sure. Ain't nobody fucking with us in the world. Fuck, fuck the state in the world. That's how I feel. Bro, like shit. I mean, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Some people gonna say, oh, he just fat mouth and talking. But nah, I'm for real. I'm dead ass serious. Like, bro, we got some hot shit, bro, better than a lot of niggas in the industry, for sure. They just got to hear us. So we gonna make it our business for to get on the road and make sure these folks hear what the fuck we got to say. You feel me? Then shit, if you other niggas make it through the cracks when we open the door, that's cool. We ain't fucked up about it, but shit, because I know when the next nigga open the door, I'm... <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm in here. And I'm just trying to hold it to at least get, you know what I mean, get somebody else in. Feel me? I'ma text everybody what's going on in here. Feel me? I ain't gonna be no nigga that's gonna hold the sauce for my niggas. For sure. sure. For I'ma sure. get them up. You see how I did that? <laughs> <laughs> These niggas can't say. fuck with me, man. I'm telling you. I'm in my zone now. If I'm comfortable. For sure. Um So let, let's let's get into the big show a little bit and I kinda wanna double back to something you just said. But um so the big show is coming up this week, right? Yes sir, yes sir. I'm so whoo. Yeah, we working. For sure. Talking about hard muscle, grinding. No doubt. And there's a couple, there's two days worth of events, right? Mm -hmm. so we got a back to school drive. Uh, we're giving away backpacks, shoes. Uh, we're going to have face painters there. We're going to have a Dunkin' Tank. You getting in the Dunkin' Tank? If you need somebody, I will. All right, bet. You got this hang upside down, though. Why? I don't know, aesthetics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking with you, man. Uh, man, we're gonna have a dunk tank, um, bounce house, a DJ. We're gonna give away 500 backpacks. I think I already said that. We're gonna be washing cars. We're gonna donate the proceeds to a, a youth football team that we're involved with doing this. Uh, we got great sponsors that's helping us. Uh, man, it's just a beautiful event. That's the first day. You feel me? You gotta give back before you receive. You gotta give before you receive. You gotta give, remember that. You gotta give before you receive. Don't be out here just with your hand out all the time trying to receive, receive, receive. You gotta give. But yeah, then the next day, we got the big show, you feel me? We got over 50 artists, we got two stages. We got, um, shit, we got a lot of shit going on, bro. We got the Chew Your Room, man. We got vendors, food, all that shit, bro. The festival vibes. Feel me festival vibes. So like first off, what made you want to add the the charity? That, Cause that's a new that's a new thing, right? The, the, yeah. the day before, like the I don't know what it's community service community service day. Like um, what made you want to want to add that in? Like I said, you gotta give before you receive. I feel like if we can start touching the youth now. Pause. Hold on. That sound bad. But <laughs> nobody thought that, bro. You just <laughs> All right, cut that, cut that, cut that. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I feel like, like I said from the beginning, you gotta give before you receive. Uh, I feel like, bro, you gotta be, you gotta be what you wanna want the kids to be. You gotta be in the community giving back. 
You feel me? You gotta you gotta be out here letting them know like, hey, this is wrong. You gotta teach these kids because a lot of these kids are lost because they looking for guidance because they probably not getting it at home. And yeah, we can't be in every single household, but at the times that we can give back to the community and show these kids that, all right, uh, we want to give back to you guys so that way you guys don't make some of the same mistakes that we made, my peers my age, older, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that's important. Like. We can take twenty, thirty dollars all day at the door and have everybody and their mama come there to the show. That's cool, but then you got these kids that's missing out. Like you feel me? That probably ain't getting no backpacks or getting no clothes or getting no fresh pair of shoes. Like, man, that shit come first because you know the kids is our future. And I want somebody that I care for wiping my ass when I can't do it for myself. Not somebody that I neglected and shit like that. They ain't gonna care about me like that. So that's why you gotta give, you gotta pour into these kids, into these peers, and even your peers at your age, you gotta pour into them so they understand. But also too, it may be a day where they need to pull back into you. You know what I'm saying? Cause you did all the pouring, now you empty. And it be situations like that, so. For sure. You feel like that happens to you sometimes? Mm-hmm. I feel like that happened to me I sometimes. Just, the way you said it, it kind of felt like something you felt. So <laughs> nah, for it. sure. I feel like, yeah, I feel like that. For sure. Um, so kind of, uh, let's let's give a rundown kind of on the show aspect of it. So you, you're doing two stages, right? Yes, sir. Um, just buku artists. I'm not even going to try to name yeah, everybody because nah, I'm going to name somebody else. Exactly. They're going to be mad. So just, just talk about kind of the idea behind bringing that many people in and, and giving that many people the opportunity to perform and everything like that? I feel like this platform is for us. At the end of the day, I built it, yes, but the platform is for us. Can this take off for somebody else? Yes, but where it started from was a platform that I created, the big show. You feel me? This could be a chance to put somebody on to go across the world, change their life forever. It could all start from one right person seeing them at the big show. You feel me? This platform really legitimately is for us. It's not for just individual me. See, I didn't even put myself on the flyer. You feel me? My name not on the flyer besides as it presented by. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big picture of you, but. See, everybody think it's me. It's not me, but Steve yes, Harvey. it's me. Steve Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> he joined it. No, I'm not. Crazy. No, um, but really, man, it's, it, this shit never. That's not you? Yeah, it's me. Oh, okay. But <laughs> but this shit never was really about me though. Like, you know what I mean? It was always been about the people, the peers, like shit. At the end of the day, I know that I need them just as much as they need me. You feel me? Like I need them more because without them, I can't eat and feed my family. Yeah. You know what I mean? So shit, let's give all of these artists a chance to stand in front of these these so many fans because the last two years the last year was like four five hundred people there shit this year i'm 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 praying we do two thousand you feel me but shit like to sit in front of all these people that man nobody be really coming out in the city like that you've been to the shows you feel me like this the talk of the town no bullshit i'm not even trying to boost it up but it's not about me the people made it the talk of the town you put the right people on there, you feel me? They get to telling their friends, now everybody want to be a part of the big show. Now everybody feel like when they name not on there, they left out, they're not left out. I just, I, we just ain't heard of you yet. Or we have heard of you, you just ain't working hard enough or you ain't doing enough, you ain't consistent enough. All those things play a, play a role into this because shit at the end of the day, like you want to be put in this platform, but you, hadn't been taking your craft serious. So, you know, that's because goes out to all the artists that's, that's listening and watch this, like, shit, moving forward, like, bro, we gonna have strict shit for the big show. We gonna, you gonna have to submit your shit next year. But outside of that, bro, consist, uh, consist, continue to keep working, bro, always. Never stop to grind, whether we see you or not. You feel me? Never stop to grind, bro, because somebody out there is watching for sure, for sure. For sure. That was a hell of a clip that I hope everyone that follows us watches because <laughs> that was real shit. People, no, for you know, sure, for sure, bro. It, it's not just, it's not just, you know, because somebody didn't like you. There, there's a reason that, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, no, for sure. For but sure. sometimes a lot of these people be scared to kind of tell people the truth about what it is. 
You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, like shit, this is business. It's the music business. It's not just music. It's the music business. Think about business. Uh, you gotta ask yourself, like, how, if you conducted a business and somebody else acted the way that you acted at your business, how would you feel? Okay, cool. If your business is always giving out free stuff, where is your business going to make money? Okay, cool. Uh, if you can't provide for the lease on the biz the building that you're leasing, then whose problem is that? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, man, this shit. Get your business in order so when you present your business to the world, people will respect your business. When people respect your business, they're gonna pay for your business. You feel me? That's that's how you start getting paid. When people start you taking, you take your business serious enough, the next person will. If you half-ass, they gonna half-ass. You feel me? Yes, people gonna always try to undercut you and try to tell you that your shit ain't what this is, but as long as you got the proof and the pudding, and mother can tell you shit, feel me? You got the same 24 hours I got, you feel me? Do your own shit. They don't wanna book you, do your own shit. Straight up, that's, what I, that's how I came into the game. I didn't know one person. I, well, I lied. I did know people, but not that was booking artists that of my caliber. I was nobody. They was my friends, but I was nobody. Yeah. I couldn't help them. I couldn't help them make a dollar. Nobody was coming to see me. They was not coming to see me. So. I thought, okay, they not gonna come see me at your event. I'm gonna throw my own event and everybody that's gonna come, they're coming because of me. Yeah. If it's five, 10, 50, however many it is, okay, now I got a little, a little core, a little core fan base. And then it just, it just keep growing. Now I got family, which is music shit for real shit crazy. Shit a movie. For sure, no doubt. That's, you know, I was, I, I made fun of you a little bit on the poster because you, but for real, like putting everybody on that shit is dope. Like, give nah. people the opportunity. It's, for sure. It's something dope for the city. So, um, the state, really, you got the whole state. Yeah, I and got it. more, like, it's people from, for sure. Um, and so, um, kind of talk about the logistics side of that for you because, you know, I mean, you are performing at the show, right? To be continued, I don't know. <laughs> You motherfucker got me working like a slave. I'm tired. No, yeah. I'm playing. Uh, shit. The plan is to hit the stage for sure. But if I had to cut anybody, said it to be mine. Just so everybody else can get their shine, for sure. I'm, but I'm just that type of nigga. My heart that big, for sure. For sure. No, but I, I mean, like even just planning your own show, like even as much as it's a show for everybody else, like. Let's talk about the kind of work that has to go into that. Uh, well, this year was different. I had worked with two assistants this year getting this shit done. Uh, day in, day out, late night phone calls, early morning phone calls, uh, shit. The logistics going into this motherfucker is just one of those things. Like, shit, this shit cost some paper. Like, feel me? Looking for sponsors, building relationships, writing out press kits and shit like that, bro. I needed help doing this shit. I'm not going to lie. But shit, it's all man-made, it's all Southwest, it's all grind. You feel me, anything I touch and put my hands on to do, I'm gonna be fully invested. So I've been locked in with this shit. So for the last four, five months, I've been big show, big show, big show. Even doing the dropping of the album, or the uh, EP. It's all about the big show. Yeah, for sure. No, I remember you was talking about it in like, March or like mm -hmm. way early, so yes. And this year, shit, next year I'm starting out the day after we once the stage break down, I'm starting on the next one. For sure. For sure. Um, so kind of get into, um, we touched on it like, not directly in a couple of different ways, but I kind of want to get your thoughts on just like, where we're at, like as far as Oklahoma with the music scene, um, just just everything that's going on just in general, like where, what are your thoughts about the current state of everything? I think personally me, I think Oklahoma got some of the best music, and not just saying that because I'm in Oklahoma, but just being on the road, I'm actually, I'm one of the guys that's actually on the road. So I'm seeing different people, and I'm seeing uh, shit, different type of performers, you know, and I'm like, damn, we got somebody in the city that's cold doing that same shit. You feel me? Oh, we got a nigga just like this in the city that's doing that same shit, but better to me. You feel me? I think that the music is is at it's at a good place, but I also feel like we at a place where uh, niggas do more Facebook and then actually real work and like 
you gotta treat this shit like your nine to five for real. You know, even from with everything, whether you do a camera, whether you do graphics, whatever it is, you gotta treat this shit like a nine to five for real. Even though you may not go punch a clock, you still need to be working on your craft because shit, if you don't use it, you lose it. It takes 10,000 10, hours to perfect something. Niggas really ain't putting 10,000 hours into nothing. But that's why you see so many people that get on and they fall right back off. If I get on today, I feel like, me personally, I feel like I have longevity because I've built, build and build and build and build. Sometimes I build and destroy. Sometimes shit just fell apart. Sometimes shit, I didn't know what else to build on it. So I started building something else. I just keep building and building and building. And now it's like, damn, all this shit starting to really come together. Now I got this big ass mansion, this big ass house, this big ass ideas. Bro, just everything big, like, you feel me? So I'm excited to see what the future holds with, with Southwest Dez and the Gap Gang, for sure. For sure. So, and then another thing you touched on as far as, like, beyond the music, because I, I know you said that's there, and especially, like, with Gap Gang, you kind of were talking about the, the music's there. So what do you, you feel like, like, y'all or you or just anybody, what do you feel like that, that last, like, step up like last hurdle to where it's like I think the people, only thing to where people oh, not in Oklahoma are paying attention I guess is my question the only thing that we've truly missing is that right cosign for sure that's it I don't think there's nothing else that that we missing and that goes for not even just the gap just anybody in the city that's doing their shit it's just the right cosign because see you get cosigns from this person that person even if they big or not it's the right cosign at the right time. It's all about just that right shit. It might be the right motherfucker that posts the right video, the right angle at the big show that could blow me or anybody else up this weekend. Just G shit, you know what I mean? Like it's just, so it's just like all about timing, bro, I guess. But we missing the right cosign though, no, for sure. That right cosign, I feel like. It's not about the money. It's not about none of that. The right cosign. And then the work that backs the cosign. For sure. Not just one record, but I'm talking about five for five. That these niggas can say, oh yeah, this motherfucker's serious. Yeah. And then, you know, everybody else gonna bandwagon. And go from there. For sure. Um, so just kind of... You know, tell them, first of all, you know, this will be out before the big show, so you want to tell them, like, where to get tickets, oh, how to yeah, get tickets, was, how to yeah. come, times. Uh, so if you want to come to the actual car wash and backpack giveaway, it's from 5 to, oh, I'm sorry, from 6 to 8.30 at Mango's on Northwest, no, I'm sorry, yeah, Northwest 36 in North May, uh, Mango Cannabis. Uh, from 6 to 8.30, and the big show is at Farmer's Market. That's 311 South Klein from 5 to 11, and tickets are online. You can find them online or from your favorite artist, but at online, that's thebigshowokc.com. You can get the tickets, you know what I'm saying? You can tap in with your boy. I'm fucking with y'all, man. Big Southwest, man. You already know, man. You already know how the fuck we coming to Oka, Southwest. We ain't no local jokers no more, man. We big. Yes, sir. Appreciate you sitting down, bro. For sure, for I'm sure, man. Excited to to see what's what's coming. I've you know got little sneaks and you know. I yeah, you got you got that, some. So. Yeah, you got uh, some I'm, shit I'm that I ain't to. got. Excited to see what's what's coming. Excited for this weekend too. Man, sure. I, I'm definitely excited. I think this shit gonna be big. I, I want to come back in here and be like, yeah, bro. So what y'all thought? I want to interview y'all next time. I'm gonna sit right there. Y'all sit right here. I'm gonna interview y'all. All we right. have cameras on both of us. I'm gonna talk about the big show. Let's do it. For sure. Let's do it. All right, bet. For sure. Yeah. Like I said, bro. Appreciate you. Big Southwest and I'm out. You know what I'm saying? Ka 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 ka. Ra ra ra. I got the shooters in this hole. You know what I'm saying? It's all bloopers. Yeah, that's the end.